David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another top 10 list. Uh, this time around, I wanted to discuss my top 10 entry-level gold nibs. At times, especially when you are getting started in this hobby, it can be a bit overwhelming. There are so many options, so many choices. And that's why I will from time to time post top 10s lists like these to help you make an informed buying decision as to what works best for you and fits your tastes and style. Um, one of the biggest hurdles folks have when they are starting with this hobby is that transition into gold nibs. Um, I can remember being very nervous purchasing a $60 pen, but when you are talking about entry-level pens with gold nibs, you're talking about, you know, like the 175 to 200-ish range, and that can make folks real nervous. And I understand the fear of not wanting to make a mistake. So what I'm going to do today is go over my list for the top 10 entry-level gold nibs. And maybe one of these catches your eye and is a good place to start for you. In the most general of terms, the main difference performance-wise between steel and gold nibs is that steel nibs tend to be a bit stiffer. Um, that's not a bad thing, though. I have tons of steel nibs I love. Um, they can also feel a bit softer, um, but just like steel nibs, gold nibs can have individual personalities of their own. So, in order to take a look at my top 10 entry-level gold nibs, please join me over here at camera 2. To begin with, this list is not in any particular order. Uh, what I'm going to do is show you some pens and then we'll do some writing samples. I will admit this list is rather pilot heavy and there's a reason for that. Pilot has a number of great pens which fall into this category, being reasonably priced and gold nibbed. Something else I wanted to at least mention was vintage pens. I don't own a lot of vintage pens. I haven't been bitten by the vintage bug, but you can find reasonably priced gold nibs on some vintage pens. While none made this particular list, I at least wanted to mention that as a possible option. Uh, this right here is a Parker Vacuumatic, which I believe dates back to 1937, which is kind of amazing. And it has a 14 karat gold nib, which writes very well. Um, vintage pens are a world in and of itself. Um, something for another video, but I at least want to mention it as an option in regard to this particular list. So in regard to what did make my list, let's start with one of those pilots, and that would be the Pilot Custom 74. Um, this pen retails for around $160 and is available in a wide variety of colors. Um, this one here being the Clear Demonstrator. Now it has a 14 karat gold nib. Um, this is Pilot's number five nib. Uh, now, just as an aside, you can see right next to the, let's see, let's see if you can get it in here. Right next to the 14K, um, there is a number. It says 585. Um, 24 karat gold is pure gold, which is too soft to be used for a nib. So the gold needs to be mixed with other metals like uh, copper or zinc or silver or nickel. Um, 14 karat means that 14 parts out of the 24 are pure gold, which breaks down to 58.3%. Um, but the number here says 58.5 or 585, which means that this nib has 585 out of 1,000 parts gold. Um, but why is this 585 when it only contains 58.3? I know that's a small number, but it's because some manufacturers produce their 14 karat gold slightly pure and prefer for it call, to call it 585. Um, 583 and 585 gold are basically the very same. Um, the Pilot Custom 74 is a great pen for the price. Um, it isn't uh, as traditional as some of the other pens from Pilot, um, but it is a very, very nice offering. Speaking of a more traditional offering, we have the second pen on this list, which is another pen from Pilot, and that would be the Custom 742. Now, I'm not going to go into a long explanation about the numbering system Pilot uses. Um, I think someday I should do an overview uh, of the Pilot Custom and Custom Heritage lineup and explain everything, but essentially the number of the pen is the year from the date Pilot was founded in 1918 uh, in which this pen was produced. So this is a 74, so it's 74 years after 1918, which would make it 1992, which is the date the pen was released. Not necessarily this particular one made. Um, and if a pen should have a third number like 742, that third number relates to the original price of the pen in Japanese yen. So this pen was released in 1992 and the cost was 20,000 yen, which is about $175. 
The 742 has a slightly larger nib. This is Pilot's number 10 nib. We'll show you in comparison to the number five that was on the 74. You can see it's slightly larger. Um, while this nib is outstanding, um, the 742 is not readily available through the U.S. retailers. Um, if you would care to purchase one of these pens, you'll typically need to go through an Asian-based retailer or something like eBay or Amazon. Um, the, this pen is very similar in size to a Mont Blanc 146. Um, I really care for the size and the feel of this particular pen. Um, I like it in the hand a great deal. Okay, on to pen number three. And how about we look at a non-pilot pen? And that would be the Sailor 1911 Standard. The Sailor 1911 Standard retails for around $180. This particular model is called the Fresca and is slightly more, but the uh, size and nib are exactly the same as the base model 1911 Standard. The nib I have on this particular pen is called a zoom nib, which is really cool and fun to play around with. You can significantly vary the line width this pen produces by changing the angle of the nib to the paper. And it even writes very, very well upside down, uh, reverse. Um, I'll show you during the writing sample uh, a little bit of exactly what this nib could do, but it's very nice and Sailor nibs are some of my favorite in my collection. They, uh, Sailor makes a very, very good gold nib. Next up is a pen from Platinum, and that would be the 3776 Century. These pens typically retail for around $175 and come in a variety of colors. Uh, this one here is the Chartres Blue. Um, then I have this one here, which is the Carnelian Red. Uh, and then I actually have this clear demonstrator here, which is uh, really cool. This one was part of their Lake series. This is called the Yamanaka. This has some cool waves on it. Now, these two were more premium pens, but this Chartres Blue is one of their, we'll call it, base models. The nib is 14 karat gold, uh, and you can see here that it's a little bit flatter. Um, let's show it in comparison to the Pilot. You can see that the top of the, the nib on the Pilot is a bit more rounded. The shoulders come around a little bit more, but it's just a little bit flatter on the Platinum. Um, you know, I do find that platinum nibs have a bit more bounce to them. Um, some folks like that bounciness, but personally, it's not my favorite characteristic. Um, overall, though, the 3776 is a quality offering and a great entry into gold nibs. Pen number five. And for this one, I'm actually going to give you a bit of a twofer because these pens are so similar. Um, we have the Pilot Vanishing Point as well as the Pilot Decimo. Um, the Vanishing Point, the larger of the two, or VP as it's known, retails for around $156, and the Decimo, the smaller one, uh, retails for $144. They are essentially the very same pen, utilizing the same 18 karat gold nib unit, with the Decimo just being a bit smaller than the VP. Let me go ahead and just remove one of these nib units, just so you can get a closer look at it. Um, you can see here how it is significantly narrower than the other nibs that we have looked at, but that doesn't mean that it lacks in performance. I find the Vanishing Point nib to be, uh, to be very soft and lay down a decent amount of ink. It is 18 karat gold. Um, I don't find them to have as much flex or bounce as some of the others on the list, but the Vanishing Point and the Decimo to a lesser extent are extremely popular pens and a very common one for which folks pick up for their very first gold nib in their collection. Five down, five to go. Next up, we have an offering from Pilot, which is no longer readily available, but I care for it a great deal, and that is this pocket pen right here. In the Asian markets, this pen was marketed as the Stella 90S, and in the West, it was called the Stargazer. Um, it was discontinued by Pilot about two or three years ago. Um, a while back, I did a top 10 list of my favorite pocket pens, and this pen came in at number one. I just love this pen. It has a 14 karat gold number three nib. I believe this is the smallest gold nib that Pilot manufactures, uh, but for what it lacks in stature, it makes up in performance. I find this medium nib to be very soft and decently smooth with better than average ink flow. 
Um, this is what it looks like in comparison to the number five nib. So you can see it's just slightly smaller than the number five. I, would still, I really wish they still manufactured this pen. Um, if you could get your hands on one in the secondary market uh, or with someone selling some old new stock, uh, it's something I would highly recommend. Um, a fair price for this pen, in my opinion, is like the 135, 150 range. Um, smaller pocket pens typically aren't my thing, but I really care for this pen, which goes to show how good it is. Next up is a pen which amazes me. It's a pen which is over 50 years old, but looks like it could have been released this week, and that is the Lamy 2000. Uh, this is a pen which typically retails for right around $200, and it is a timeless classic. Uh, there is so much to like about this pen. There is the unique Macrolon material used. I really like the blocky clip. Now, the section on this pen can be a bit polarizing. Um, it is tapered rather sharply, and the section is made from metal, but there is some texturing applied to it to help uh, reduce that slickness and keep it from being overly slick. Um, the pen features a hooded rhodium plated 14 karat gold nib. Um, this one I have here is a double broad. You can see its double broadness here. Um, it lays down a fat, juicy line. There are some folks who feel this nib has a bit of a small sweet spot, uh, meaning that if you hold the pen at a certain angle, it's fantastic, but if the angle is off a bit, the nib doesn't perform as well. Um, some nibs are a bit more forgiving in regard to accommodating a wider variety of writing styles. A bit of an honorable mention, Lamy does offer a gold replacement nib for around $100. This is what that nib looks like on a Dialog 3. You can see that it just kind of clips right on the side. It has that gold stripe down the front. Uh, it just clips right onto the feed. Uh, now, if you really wanted to, you could pick up a fairly inexpensive Lamy Safari or All Star and equip it with one of those gold nibs. You can see that it's the same nib style. It just clips right on the feed. Now, you might have some folk folks look at you a bit strange, but who cares? If putting a gold nib on a safari is your thing, then go for it. Three more to go, and next we have a pen from Pilot with what I feel is the most unique nib on this list, and that is the Pilot Falcon. Um, first of all, it's unique in regard to its looks. It's a very distinctive design for the pen as well as the nib. You can see here, it's a little bulbous and then a little bit, a little bit flat. Um, and secondly, it provides a fair amount of flex without overly taxing the nib. Um, there was a time when this pen was branded as the Namiki Falcon, uh, but the company moved it under the pilot name. Um, this model is made from resin and retails for about $180. There is a metal version of this pen which sells for a bit more. Um, I'll show you in the writing sample, but this is just a fun pen to use and often shows up on people's lists of their favorite pens of all time. Penultimate pen, and it is an offering from Sailor, and that would be the Sailor Pro Gear Slim. Now, this was a special edition model in their Four Seasons line. This is called the uh, Yuki Subaki, I believe. I'm probably butchering that name, but the standard Pro Gear Slim model retails for around $180. Now, I showed you the 1911 standard previously. Um, you could see that they are essentially the very same pen. Um, the cap and the barrel and everything else is the same. Mainly the difference here is that the ends of the 1911 standard are tapered, but the Pro Gear ends are flat. Um, the nibs are the very same size as well. Um, Sailor makes some of my favorite nibs in my collection. And for a first gold nib, um, I don't feel you'd be very disappointed with uh, either of the Sailors that are on this list. Okay, final pen on this list, and appropriately enough, it's another pilot. And that would be the Custom Heritage 92. Now, coming in at $220, this is the most expensive pen on the list, but it is one of my favorites. Um, it has some unique elements not found on any other Pilot pen. Namely, it is a piston filler. I believe this is the only piston filler in Pilot's lineup. Uh, they have this piston filler, the, uh, the 823 is a vacuum filler, and then everything else is cartridge converter. Uh, well, if you count the Namiki Emperor, that one's an eyedropper, but uh, this Custom Heritage 92 is very unique. 
I love that the translucent plastic gives you a fantastic look at the ink of your choice. Lately, I've been keeping Diamine Pumpkin in here, which is a nice reddish orange, which adds a pop of color to this pen. Um, it could be a bit of a pain to clean this pen if ink should happen to get behind this inner sleeve, but overall, this is a fantastic pen. The name here is outstanding. Uh, this one here is a medium, but it is very much an Asian medium, which is more like a Western fine. Uh, it lays down a really nice line. Okay, to wrap things up as a little recap, I'll do a little writing sample for each of the nibs. The ink that I'm using is a brand new ink from Krishna called a Krishna Peacock, which I'll be reviewing here in the next couple of weeks. So to begin with, we had the Pilot Custom 74. Then next up, we had the Pilot Custom 742. I didn't show it earlier, but you can see here that the 742 is uh, slightly longer than the 74 as well. Then next up, we have the Sailor 1911. Now I'm gonna angle the nib here. And then I'll even do upside down. So you can see how the line varies on this zoom nib depending on how you're holding it. It's fun to play around with. And then next up, we had the Platinum 3776. Now I mentioned this one was a little bit bouncier. Maybe I can show it here, how the nib kind of separates very easily from the feed and it just has a bit more bounce to it. Um, it's not my favorite feature, but I know there's a lot of folks out there that enjoy that feeling. Then next up, we had the Pilot Vanishing Point. Followed up by this little beauty here, the Stella 90S. Or the Stargazer, depending on the market that you're in. Then we had the Lamy 2000. This is a very nice double broad nib. You can see that this double broad nib lays down a very fat and juicy line. Then we had the Falcon with, it, with its unique nib. We have the Pilot Falcon. And this one is bouncy as well, but you can see that it can you can get a decent amount of flex out of this nib with very little effort. Um, it's one that a lot of people really like. Then we had the Sailor Pro Gear Slim. And you can see how this medium nib lays down a significantly lighter line than some of the other nibs. And finally, we have the Pilot Custom Heritage 92. So, there's a look at my top 10 entry-level gold nibs. Um, if you are looking to take a leap into a pen with a gold nib, then I think that one of these featured here would be a good start, in my opinion. Until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.